Good morning and welcome to Impact on a Tuesday morning. It is uh, my pleasure and honor to have our MLA with us uh, for Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, uh, Tani Yao. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Did I get that right? It's Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo. You bet. You I always bet. get the two mixed up and uh, the other one is Fort McMurray, Conklin. That's correct, Russell, but uh, that will be evolving into Fort McMurray and Lac Labiche. When, when does that change happen? Uh, by the next election, so uh, 2019 spring. A little bit of ways. It's going to be exciting. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, this show is called Impact. And, you know, one of the things from a, a real objective perspective that I've noticed about you is that you seem to be everywhere. You're very present in the community. Is that something you strategically set out to do, to be present? Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, that's what the role was, and uh, I embraced it wholly and fully. Um, I know in... Uh, Brian uh, convinced me to run with him. One of the reasons was every time we got together and chatted about stuff, I was just complaining and arguing about the things that we were lacking in our community that I see in so many others. Yeah. And when you know, when you think about the contributions our economy, our, our, our uh, community gives to the entire nation, really, it's uh, it's it's disheartening. So that's why I stepped up to the plate, and that's what I'll continue to do. Take us back to that time when I think you guys were in the hospital dealing with very personal situations when you had the conversation and you made the decision. Take What was that like? That's right. Uh, well, my uh, father was in Edmonton. He was just very old and uh, ill. And uh, so I was at the university hospital and uh, just stepped out and crossed paths with Brian. And I didn't realize he was there. And we started chatting and he was there for his son, Michael. And, uh, and it just continued from there so we knew each other from before mm. uh to a to a, a reasonable uh effect and uh um yeah we were it was uh it was an interesting time there but we were there to give each other moral support in the end and you know we go for coffees and stuff like that and visit each other and uh um and uh but yeah it was certainly during that time that i watched the evolution of a man who had just left politics to be with his family to someone who became quite driven to fix some things that he was he himself was encountering yeah yeah you in a previous life were a firefighter that's right a paramedic firefighter here with fort mcmurray mm -hmm. fire department uh so back in 1991 i got my emt and then i eventually got my paramedics and uh then came up here you were at that for a long time that was a 20-year career i'd say wow yeah when you look back on those years, um, lessons maybe that you picked up that have served you in this life? Uh, you know what? Uh, being a paramedic, and I worked uh, for the ambulance service in Pinoka, as an example, and then I worked for the air ambulance in Lac Labiche and Peace River before coming up to Fort McMurray. And, uh, and uh, I got to see a lot of the province as well as some of the other provinces just interacting with them, dropping patients off or picking up. Uh, uh, I got to see the wide array of health facilities that we had and the, and the uh, differences and similarities. So it was an interesting experience and mm. made me start to pay more attention to the, how the whole health system was structured. So that was coincidental, but it serves me now as the health critic, certainly. Were you one of the persons that actually dealt with people in trauma? Was that part of what you did? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we still did ground ambulance uh, work and stuff like that, picking patients up initially. The air ambulance stuff, uh, we were picking up the most critical patients from communities like, uh, you know, your Cold Lakes and your Lac Labiches, and yeah. even here in Fort McMurray, and uh, stabilizing them and bring them to the, to the big hospitals in the uh, city. And in this new role as an MLA, while you may not be dealing with people in like emergency trauma, I would imagine, I'm just com completely reading between the lines, that you have people that come to you that have a variety of situations that you need to help them with. Absolutely. That is part of the role is people who, you know, I, I call it people fall through the cracks. They, they seem to feel like they can't find their path navigating through our social services system or, or, or even our health system. And we try to... Uh, accommodate them by bringing their issues to attention and trying to address those, certainly. Yeah. I had Councillor Jane Stroud in the studio a couple of weeks ago, and I asked her this question, and I'm interested to hear your perspective. The role of the politician 
in dealing with the bureaucracy or the the the, the administrative part of, of of government you talk about a health issue what's your approach to you as a politician helping solve problems that maybe are at the administrative level uh, you know what? We do have to do our due diligence. So we ask people to craft it out on paper so we can like read it and try to understand it. But then we try to get the other side of the story and we investigate it that way. Uh, and through government, we have channels that we can take through that. A lot of it is through the particular ministers and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, we try to just do our inquiries. And a lot of times they do help us to try to uh, find a resolve to it. And, uh, you know, that's the aspect I guess people don't see is we actually work together with the government officials to try to achieve these goals for these people without you know putting it all over Facebook or Twitter or anything <laughs> like that right how would you describe the learning curve that you've had to go through since being elected it was substantial uh, straight up it was uh, a job I didn't quite think I would actually do I've always been interested in politics I suppose but to actually step up to the plate like you did many years ago, you know, that's a hard push, isn't it, to yeah. to cross that threshold and and do it. But uh, I had the benefit of a very good mentor, Brian Jean, quite honestly. So, what, what lessons have you learned? What are the things that jump up as, you know what, I didn't know this before and I know it now? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, you know, this job is no different than any other job in the sense that you have issues that uh, you're confronted with and just trying to find that resolution but also trying to get to the heart of the matter and uh, you know in my previous job I did that as well right and I think we, we all deal with that in our own uh, jobs and whatnot is is you have issues and you just have to re try to resolve them so it's just the resources you have available are different and wherever you go right in the latter part of your uh, career as a, a firefighter par paramedic you were in somewhat of a leadership role is that correct you were the I was the assistant deputy chief of operations so uh, strictly to uh, EMS so I ran the ambulance for the uh, region mm -hmm. so and I worked with Alberta Health Services when they that was the time when they came and took over the ambulance services so it was uh, interesting that leadership role compared to the leadership role you have today are there are there similarities are there are there things that tie the two together um you know what there are a lot of similarities because uh as the chief of ems if you will for the region uh um you know people came to me with their issues regarding specific to ems so so it was a bit more limited range and whatnot but uh um you know, it was it was very enjoyable, and uh, that you, I was in a position where I could try and resolve things and mm -hmm. identify them and stuff like that, and deal with them accordingly. Do so. you miss that life at all? The fire hall, I do, I do. It's uh, you know, we have a great fire department here in Fort McMurray. Everyone should know that. We have a because of our location and uh, sometimes difficulties in recruitment, we get people from right across the nation, from Newfoundland to. Uh, to uh, BC applying up here and uh, they make Fort McMurray their home and you know it's no different than any other uh, sector in our community is it but uh, we attract a lot of good people and um, you know we have an excellent department excellent team from top to bottom our guest this morning is Tani Yao the MLA for Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo uh, we're going to take a break uh, here on impact you're listening to 91.1 the bridge Welcome back to Impact. Our guest this morning is Tani Yao, the MLA for Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo. So grateful that you've found time. You're a busy guy. You're everywhere. And so I appreciate that you came in this morning. Well, thank you very much. And for being busy, you can thank Vaughn Jessam. He's the <laughs> manager at my office there, and he makes sure my schedule is always full. Yeah, we were having quite a conversation. Vaughn and I go way back to the mid-1990s when I first came to town. When did you first come to Fort McMurray? Uh, my family came here in 77. Uh, oh, my gosh. And... Uh, Sorry, 78. Well, uh, that winter. So, so you've spent much of your life here. I did. I did. I left when I was uh, 18, 19 around there and came oh. back when I was about 25. What high school did you go to? I went to comp. Yeah. Yeah. Right where we are now. So in this space that we are, do you remember what it was back in those days? Yes, I do. Actually, it was a drafting class here. Yeah. We had Kim Hurley in the studio a couple of weeks ago. She said, uh, she called it something else, though. What was it? Uh, not shop, but she had a term for it. 
I don't remember. And uh, <laughs> so when you think back to growing up in Fort McMurray, to being in Fort McMurray today, you've seen a lot of change. Oh, I think we all have. Uh, it's uh, Even if you've been here a short time, there's been a lot of uh, evolution in our community. I mean, our community is beautiful, isn't it? Mm, you know, despite the uh, uh, fire uh, hurting our uh, force here, uh, you can see the growth happening right now. You can see the green. And uh, and our, as for facilities, I mean, really, we have amazing world-class facilities here, don't we? I mean, everything from our airport to our recreational facilities. You've, you've walked right into the direction I wanted to go, which was we kind of did this massive build during the height of the boom, you know, the 08, 09, 2010. And then all of a sudden, the bottom fell out. And to some degree, we're now looking at certain facilities that maybe feel a little bit like they were overbuilt. The, the, the airport is a good example. But you're, you, as a longtime resident, you've seen things go up and you've seen things go down and then return. Where is your sense intuitively about where we are and where we might be going as a community? I think we're going to continue to grow, quite honestly. I think uh, when um, the infrastructure is built to export our product here, you will see uh, reinvigorated interest uh, in some of the uh, oil sands around this region. Uh, certainly, I mean, look, a lot of the companies are still planning ahead, they, to, to doing their due diligence, and some of these uh, sites are a little bit closer to town, and I think uh, there might be the opportunity for those people to be living here. Like, they, they wouldn't have to worry about commuting and that sort of thing. So uh, I see some great potential uh, if they move ahead with these. I'm going to ask a question, and it's not a political question. It's more a question for, for, that I want you to answer from your, your experience and, and knowledge and your role as a community leader. We have been uh, somewhat reliant on one industry for a very long time. So what role can diversification play right here in Wood Buffalo? What role do you think it should play? You know what? I think we have the infrastructure to be a hub for the north. When you think of the northwest territories and even northern uh, uh, British Columbia and Saskatchewan, I think we have a lot, a lot of opportunity to serve these communities in other ways. Uh, you know, look at the proliferation of... Uh, of uh, the green technology to grow uh, plants and stuff. It's focused on one industry right now, but I hope they consider using some of that uh, 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 expertise to grow, you know, fruits and vegetables that you and I can have. Because as we know, the nutritional value of a lot of the stuff that we get up north yeah. tends to be less just because it's produced so far out, yeah. out, with, out there. What gets you excited? Uh, you mentioned the, the, uh, the substance that's going to be all over the country here legally fairly quickly, but what gets you excited in terms of issues that uh, pop up? Because you, oftentimes in a political role, you're on the front edge of many things, whether it's uh, recycling or, or in environmental technology. What gets you personally excited? What gets me personally excited within uh, my role in the yeah, government? Yeah, the things that are coming to government every day, um, whether it's new technology or something that's just uh, on the cusp, like pipelines and other things. Well, certainly, like, say, specific to health, I see um, them using somewhat uh, telehealth as an example, which is, uh, you know, yeah. basically FaceTime or, or, or Skype for specific to the health uh, system so that people can access... Uh, specialists and other uh, medical professionals, but it's being far underutilized. I think mm -hmm. I, we have over fifteen thousand people or people that take over fifteen thousand trips to see different issues in the city. Um, so that's a lot of people going back and forth for tests and stuff like that. And I can't help but wonder if they were to invest a little bit more in these other aspects, like telehealth, as an example, and increasing access to specialists that we would have our issues addressed using technology yeah and saving a lot of money in the process absolutely and yeah. a lot of grief for people that have to travel back yeah. and forth what's the favorite your favorite part of what you get to do every day do you have a favorite aspect of this job you know what i love uh meeting people and just having discussions about the community and uh, uh you know that's part of the job is to reach out to mm -hmm. like a lot of nonprofits, as an example the social profits if you will and uh you know i think it's fantastic, uh, a lot of the services that they provide. That's one thing. I knew what they did before as a layperson, but then being in this role, you know, you're, you, you seek to understand them a bit more and all the nuances and, 
of, of, of each uh, group. And, you know, they do fantastic work, don't they? Yeah, they really do. Yeah. My guest this morning is Tani. Yeah, we need to take another break. Uh, Tani is the MLA for Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo, and you're listening to Impact. Uh, it is a team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, YMM Magazine, and of course, none of it would be possible without 91.1 The Bridge. We're back with Impact. Uh, my guest this morning is Tani Yao, the MLA for Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo. We are in the middle of a construction zone. I'm just saying, in case you hear things in the background, uh, Composite High School, where Tani went to high school, is under a massive renovation. It's looking pretty good. It's looking fantastic. I can't wait to see the finished project, but uh, the plans look amazing, don't they? Yeah, and they're starting to finish the front end of the uh, of the. I was about to say college high school, <laughs> uh, and we're in a temporary facility today so if it gets noisy that's the reason uh tani thanks again for coming in this morning uh you've talked a little bit about your role um as an mla and that you love meeting people you love helping to solve problems for people um is it something do you think you want to continue doing i mean there's a a little bit of a personal question is it something that you'll run for uh, another term uh, I'd very much like to. Currently, we're in the opposition, so uh, the opposition is a lot more tougher in the fact that we don't necessarily have access to all the subject matter experts and all the people who can actually make the changes. Mm. So uh, it would be nice to be in government, uh, to be reelected and and be on the team that wins government. And because there, you can make real change. Kind of along those lines. As you, from your perspective in opposition, looking at the process of governance, can we be better? And if so, how? That's a tough question. That is a tough question. Um, because you get frustrated with the process, I'm imagining from time to time. So you, you know, whether you're in opposition or in government, but from your perspective and you feel the frustration perhaps a little bit more than they do on the government side of the house, are there ways that we can make it a little bit more efficient? Um, well, certainly at the, from my perspective in the opposition, our job is to bring things to attention. And again, like I mentioned, it's usually the people that uh, fall through the cracks, so to speak, at those certain at the certain level. And uh, oh, where am I going with this? <laughs> it's uh, It'd be interesting to see from behind the scenes how efficient and effectively they do work and what does impair them from some of the decision making so i'm still on the outside looking yeah. in asking those same questions that you have and as yeah. well as your audience you never stop learning do you no no and that is a good thing about being in opposition first is uh you know we're forced to do a lot of our own work whereas the government side they have every expert available to them uh in the opposition i have to read my own reports i have to uh, look at the history of HS and read a lot of the reports they release as yeah. well as uh, and I look at other provinces and read some of the legislation things that they've produced yeah. as well and uh, so I've learned a lot certainly what year were you elected again 15 so 2015 so you're three years in when you look back on your three years as an MLA is there a best day what was your best day Best day is probably that first day walking up to the legislature, quite honestly. I think I was quite honestly in shock. And, uh, you know, you just, I was, uh, just walked up to the building and just stared at it for a while and realized, holy smokes, you know, I'm working here. So uh, that was a very inspiring day for me, absolutely. Yeah. Is your favorite spot in the ledge that uh, you like to go to? Uh, I like being outside the legislature and... Uh, just looking at the building there, there's some beautiful fountains in the front, mm. and uh, it's just a great place to clear your head and just yeah. get some air when uh, when things are getting heated inside that building. <laughs> mm. Well, I think I'm pro- I probably know the answer to this, but in those three years, the toughest part, the toughest toughest days or days. I think the toughest day was when we realized that the fire was going on up here in Fort McMurray, quite honestly. We are sitting in the legislature. I was talking to some friends earlier with the fire department, and, and uh, they felt that everything was, they were being given assurances that everything was under control, and then all of a sudden we start hearing otherwise, 
and I'm sitting across from the people who have direct control over all this. So uh, it was uh, a very interesting time. Like uh, we were, Brian and I were both like walking out to go find out details of the house. And I was um, gesturing at uh, the Minister of Forest uh, of uh, Forestry, uh, um, Carlier, and uh, I was yelling at him to get out so that he could give us some answers on things to get out of his seat and come to the back lounge where we mm-hmm. could speak, and he could get us some details on this. With your experience as a firefighter, was there a moment when you realized, oh my God, we are in trouble? I was certainly worried about, you know, people getting hurt. Yeah, especially when you understand the idio, uh, idiosyncrasies and the, the nuances, of the detail of how a fast a fire can sweep through. Um, I was quite aware of that. So, yeah, I was very concerned. And that's, and when you're oh, far away and you can't do anything, it... Oh. it Brutal. It is. It yeah. is. I mean, everyone in this town can attest to that because we're all mm-hmm. different places at the time right you must feel uh, an incredible sense of pride and i don't mean to imply what you're feeling but the way people responded locally to that incredible event is a story that is worth telling yes you know what our community our nation really you know even people from all over the world really uh uh came to our support and that's really heartening isn't it uh, as well as just how we locally manage the situation. Like, it was actually a very calm, cool, collect, uh, mm. for the most part. I mean, reasonable uh, evacuation, all considering. And, uh, you know, the fire department and other emergency services did a wonderful job. Yeah. One final question. You are one of the great champions of Fort McMurray and Wood Buffalo, and you get to talk about this place to people from all over the world. What do you say about our home to celebrate it. What do you say about Fort McMurray and Wood Buffalo? I challenge a lot of people to come up and visit Fort McMurray and see the natural beauty of the community, meet the people. Uh, certainly, I brag about our, our multiculturalism. Like We're a very diverse city uh, compared to so many other cities of uh, reasonable size. Uh, we're on par in diversity with the, your Torontos and Vancouver's and Montreal's and Edmonton and Calgary's, aren't we? Awesome. Tony, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. And have a delightful summer. Hopefully uh, it's not too hot, not too cold, just right. <laughs> Thank Tani you. Yao has been our guest, the MLA for Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo, and you've been listening to Impact, uh, a total team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, YMM Magazine, and 91.1 The Bridge.